Today on Dr. Phil, are you passive or aggressive? I get frustrated with people like this. It's all about you. Exactly. Who's your perfect match? There is one thing that she really needs to do. Take the personality quiz and find out. We did a little hidden camera test on this audience. And see how we turn the tables on Dr. Phil. This expert snooped in my office, and we're going to reveal what it said about my personality. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready in the booth? Let's do it. Okay, it's always interesting to know what's going on on stage before the show starts. Sometimes Anthony will bring up the party people to get us going, and it's always a certain type of person. I'm going to go out and talk about who it is. Let's see what this says about these folks. You know, I'm always paying attention to what sometimes people don't know I'm paying attention to. And uh, today we're paying attention to people's personalities. And it's a certain kind of personality that comes up here and dances around. See, all of y'all are likely to be what we call extroverts. You think? I mean, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, and, and really, 75% of the people are extroverts. They make ex they're excellent networkers. They're really assertive, and you guys would be interested to know that the majority of CEOs, the bosses, are extroverts. Politicians are extroverts. People that are leading are often extroverts. And you guys probably qualify for that category right now. Okay, go sit down for a minute. Interestingly enough, I've been paying attention to all of you guys, too. Because today, we just opened the doors and said, sit anywhere you want to sit. Now, there's a fair amount of research, actually, about this kind of thing. And I watched, okay, but the middle are often kind of shy people. They just kind of get where they can blend, right? You don't want to be in front. You don't want to be in back. Those of you close to the exit <laughs> have seen the show before. <laughs> Get out of here. It really, people are often in a rush. They look, at, they, they go in with the mindset, what's the quickest way out of here when this is over? And then the front, you got extroverts. People that want to get up front so they can see everything, maybe get involved. <laughs> Personality's interesting, don't you think? Everybody has a different personality. I mean, we're all unique in some way. And one of the things that I want to clear up while I'm talking about it is I do not have a personality test on the Internet. Not on Facebook, not anywhere. So if you see that, eh, it's a fake. However, today, we are paying attention to your personality. So all of you at home, you can go to DrPhil.com right now. There's a 10-question personality test there that you can take as we're doing the show. And we're actually going to score it for you right there so you can see how you kind of stack up on stuff. Now, we have an expert on the show today that's an expert on stuff. Because your stuff says a whole lot about you. This expert snooped in my office yesterday with a camera. And we're going to reveal what it said about my personality a little later. There's a tape that I want you to see of an individual that has one personality most of the time and then changes personality when he gets behind the wheel of a car. My horn is my godsend. I just want them out of my way. And if they don't, I take my spray like that and I spray them. And it sounds stupid, but it's, you know, look at him, he's got a wipers on. I get frustrated with people like this. How fast are we going now? 80. And now we're going to spray him. That's me telling him to get over. And some people are just clueless. Oh, it's raining. Yeah, this guy's my nemesis. He's the one I need to catch. There we go. I aggravated right now with this guy. I don't care about the cops. I don't care about nothing except catching this fool. And I spray him. Oh, Lord, I just heard a ding, and I've already got the low wash on. You know, it's very sad. 
but it's a good sense of satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? Okay, are you curious why you're that way and, and other people aren't? Oh, yeah, I'm, that's why I... So you even, even, this isn't something that you just do reactively, you actually premeditate being pissed off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you say, I'm going to get in my car, and I'm going to... You're loaded for bear with your squirters. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Um, you don't live in Texas, do you? No, sir. I'm from Texas. You don't want to be squirting people in Texas. Because <laughs> you know that it's estimated that a third of all crashes are associated with road rage? Yeah. And two-thirds of deaths involved with crashes, those crashes are involved with road rage. Somebody gets crazy and starts yeah. jerking their wheel around and that sort of thing. How is he the rest of the time? He's perfectly fine, very calm. Very calm? Yeah. So you transform. Oh, I switch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I consider myself a gentleman, open the door for my wife all the time and take care of people and, and do the right thing for people, but I get behind the wheel and I'm a different man. And I'm for real. really only if he has somewhere he has to be. Yeah. How are you in the grocery store line? Oh, I love going shopping. I'm good, aren't I? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> food, you know, I like food. I'm going shopping. So if you've got somebody up there that can't find their checkbook or they're on the phone or they're messing around, you, you don't... The you, only time, Dr. Phil, is if I'm hungry when we go to the grocery store. Then I'm like, hurry up so we can get home and I can eat. Yeah. Other than that, I'm good. But you don't pull out your pocket squirter and <laughs> get them or anything like that? No. Because, you know, here's the deal. Oh, you have to deal with them personally then. Yeah, yeah. Now, is it true that you go through three gallons of washer fluid a week? Minimum. I don't even buy washer fluid anymore. I just filled up the hose. Yeah. Really? Seriously. Each week? Yeah. Three gallons of washer fluid. Can I take those with me? Fluid. I could probably use them. Yeah. I bet you guys don't go through a gallon of this a year. And you go through three gallons a week? Easy. Mm -hmm. So you... I go through a gallon a day sometimes. Do you ever get upset if, if you run out? Oh, I'm pissed. I really do get mad. I'm like, damn, I'm out now. A long commute. But it's, yeah. it's an interesting personality quirk, don't you think, that mm -hmm. this is the one place that he does this? Mm -hmm. And I found a common denominator among the people that I've talked to about road rage, and they all seem to have the attitude that the universe revolves around them. Like you have the expectation that when you get on the road, it's supposed to separate like the Red Sea. <laughs> because you are the only one with an agenda. You are the only one that needs to get anywhere. You are the only one in a hurry. And we're going to run on. And people should just know that, okay, Brian's on the road, pull over. Pretty much. <laughs> is that yeah. your attitude? A lot. And I know that speed is a bad thing for me because I did get it pulled over by our lovely troopers. And, you know, when he clocked me, I was going 110. <laughs> but when he faster. clocked me, I was actually going 120 before and I didn't even realize it because I get so entrenched and get the hell out of my way that I just floored and then I looked down and go I better stop and I, I did get rid of a vehicle I had a you know Mustang GT and convertible and I was going in 133 down the interstate one day with the top down and I didn't even realize it until I looked down and said this is not probably the wisest thing in the world to do yeah I wasn't with exactly yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I understand that's why I'm here because I want to Understand. But do you realize that you have an unrealistic expectancy set? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. That you pull onto the road thinking, this is supposed to be about me. They should know Brian has arrived. We're now going to run my speeds, my agenda, my traffic pattern. And that that is amazingly egocentric. Oh, I yeah. mean, that's just totally yeah. about you. Oh, I totally understand. The thing I get frustrated with and I allow myself to get frustrated with is when I see people texting, eating, driving with one knee, and I take that personally for some reason. Because that's, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. But I don't see Unlike what I'm driving doing Unlike driving 133, exactly. yeah. which... Yeah. yeah, exactly. Which is much safer. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't necessarily agree. I'm just sharing with you this is my experience. Okay, so you have one set of, of standards that, to which you measure yourself and another yeah. set to which exactly. you measure everybody else. Again, it's all about you. Exactly. It's okay if you do something stupid on the highway. It's not okay if well, they do something okay, stupid. it's not okay, but I don't judge myself. Did you squirt yourself? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't squirt myself. Yeah. You should dump this on your head yeah. next time you go 133. Yeah. You get my point. Yes, sir. If you want to change this, you, you got to do a couple of things. One, you have to adjust your expectancy set. I mean, come on. I, 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 I live in L.A. Oh, I could. Th this is you... You no. would be a serial killer. I'd be dead. Yeah. One day. I'm telling you, that's the, you've got to adjust your expectancy set. All right? I don't think so.
And we're going to be talking more about personality as we go along. And the test that has become an online phenomenon, you're going to see what that is in a few minutes. You're going to find out if it's real or if it's kind of controversial as well, right after the break. Monday on Dr. Phil. When Noah throws a tantrum, I feel like a failure of a mom. What do you do if you have a child that acts like a brat? Whether you have one holy terror or triplets. Get up in that bed! Hey! Why are you yelling all the time? I don't think I yell all the time. We have a lot of tape. They're saying the blessing! Bow your head! You can brat-proof your child. You want to know the number one thing you're doing to sabotage this child's future? That's Monday. I want you to look at this dancer spinning. Now, some of you may have seen this before. Concentrate and ask yourself, is she spinning clockwise or is she spinning counterclockwise? And it makes a difference, according to this test, in terms of how you see this. And how many of you see it spinning clockwise? Okay. How many of you see it spinning counterclockwise? You know, interestingly, that's close to 50-50. Now, I believe the theory here is that if it is spinning counterclockwise, you are left brain dominant. And that means that you're logical, you're analytical, you're objective, you see things in parts instead of the whole. And if you're right-brained, it's spinning clockwise. And that means you're kind of a random thinker. You're not as linear. You, you deal with intuition uh, instead of just straight analyticals. You tend to look at the whole instead of breaking it down into the parts. And you're highly subjective. Now, this has become an Internet phenomenon. And while it's wildly popular, there are real questions whether or not it really means anything. But it does make you think, and it is interesting, that different people see it in different ways. Now, Dr. Gosling is a professor of psychology at the University of Texas. Hook em horns, that's my boy, okay? <laughs> University of Texas at Austin. Come on up and join us, if you would. <laughs> Sam, good to see you, man. Have a seat. Thank you. Now, you have written a book called Snoop. Tell us what Snoop's all about. Well, Snoop is looking at how we can express ourselves both deliberately and unconsciously in the spaces around us, and in turn, how you can look at spaces around people and figure out what they're like. Some of it they want to tell you, which is very, and they're being authentic when they do that, but some of the things they tell you uh, accidentally, just by the way they leave their, their objects on their desk and organize their books and okay. so on. Okay. Did I tell you some things accidentally when you went through my space? You, you did, and yeah, and you also said some things, I think, you know, authentic expressions, conscious authentic expressions. All right, we'll get to that to later. <laughs> I think that if you track the literature in psychology, there have, been ho there have been so many things written over the years about personality traits and characteristics, but it seems like there is a real consensus that there are kind of five big factors that describe personality right now. And that's what the test is that we put on the Internet that gives you some insight into that. I'm not saying that it's, it's perfect. Those five characteristics are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Tell us what openness means. Well, openness is really a, a, a good test. I mean, may, maybe people here could answer. Imagine that you go into a, a restaurant. And are you the type of person, when you get the menu, who points to the thing that you've never seen and say, I'll have that, whatever it is. Or are you the sort of person who says, actually, I don't even need to open the menu. I'll have the spaghetti. I like spaghetti. I like what I know. I know what I like. Bring me the spaghetti. Yeah, but what if you order something you never had and it's got snails in it or something? Then you'd wow. be in real... So I wouldn't be open if I wasn't willing to do that. That's right. That's one Some of the dimensions. Some people don't care, right. All right, conscientiousness. What are you talking about there? So conscientiousness is more about um, people who think before they act, they plan. Um, are you the sort of person who only replaces the toilet roll when it runs out? Or do you get some beforehand? So it's... So oh. Planning ahead. Now, we met some extroverts up here, mm -hmm. and most everybody knows what extroversion means. I mean, is there anything that's more subtle other than just the outgoing, engaging aspect? 
they, these people tend to be uh, more dominant, they tend to be more active, um, and, th and they really get energized by people. So, so, so everyone, many people can come to a party, but it's, uh, afterwards you can really tell between the introverts and the extroverts because the introverts need to go sit down and be alone for a bit to d decompress, whereas the extroverts are energized by it. Okay, and agreeableness is kind of um, like Mr. Rogers versus Simon Cowell. Exactly. Um, it's just how agreeable are you, and, and you, you tend to seek some point of harmony, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really are people warm, sympathetic, versus people who are going to tell it to you bluntly, and they're not going to try and uh, hide your figure. There's more, they're, they're going to be direct with you. All right, neuroticism has to do with stability, stress, worry. I mean, is this mm -hmm. a bad thing if you're high on neuroticism? Well, it depends what, what kind of a world you live in. If you're in a world full of threats, then it's good to be very alert to threats. If you're in a if you're in a safe world, which most of us now, then you can get very anxious and worried, worrying about things that aren't actually threats to you. Okay. Now, some of these things that you use to kind of demonstrate this, you have a stamp demonstration. Uh -huh. what, what? Tell me about this. All right. Well, the answer is so. Um, so, who here um, carries spare stamps in your wallet or your bag or something like that? Raise your hand high. Be proud if you carry spare stamps. Really? Okay, look around. Okay, stand up. If, if you're a stamp carrier, really, stand up. If you're a stamp carrier... Okay. Really? You carry a stamp with you? <laughs> this is fascinating to me. You have a whole page of them. You have two sets of stamps here. Did you know there would be people out here with stamps? They usually are, but yeah. Okay, what is this? What is this? What's your name? Marnie. Marnie? Marnie. Okay, would you say then that she is conscientious? She would be high on conscientious, but it goes beyond that. So what's really interesting about that is not only the people who carry stamps, but reactions like yours of the people who don't. And what's... <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and why it's interesting... Who does he think he's talking to? <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you mean? Well, what it, and what it shows you is the personality is not only what we do, like carry stamps, but it's also how we perceive the world. And what I always have this effect is the people who do carry stamps can't believe the people who don't. They think, well, what, what happens when you need to mail a letter? They're kind of like... <laughs> do, are you, do you consider yourself a conscientious person? Uh-huh. So you, are you kind of planful? Sometimes. Do, do you... Do you do you get supplies before you run out of other supplies? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, what do you say that it says about somebody like me who can't believe that somebody would wag a stamp with them around mm -hmm. for five years and it goes out of style mm -hmm. and it's not enough money to, mar but you still carry it around? Mm -hmm. Well, the, that does that does shock me. Yeah, and they and they have different they have different standards. You're just supposed to say, oh no, it looks fine. Yeah, yeah, and people just have these different standards, which is why it's quite hard to fake it because you it's hard to see the world truly as somebody with a different personality sees the world. Yeah, for sure. All right, we come back. Our our personalities.
compatible? I mean, we hear about this a lot. I mean, can you, is there a, a certain type you mesh with versus Nash with? And we're going to add a body language expert to weigh in on this because, listen, I believe that a very small percentage of our communications are verbal and a whole lot of it is what we say with our body and our syntax and how we position ourselves. So we're going to talk about all of this. You're going to learn something today. We'll be right back. Now, here we see he's looking at another woman. Look at that face. She is not happy. She's going, what? What are you doing? My name is Darcy. I've been dating Craig for about seven months. Craig's personality is different than mine in that he never seems to stress about anything. She's really easygoing. Craig's a little bit more progressive than I am. She's a little more traditional than me. I'm a pretty ambitious person. I would like to get married someday. I wouldn't really date anyone who I didn't think was a potential candidate. She's a pretty cool girl. I'm hoping to learn if Craig and I are compatible. Okay, now right now you can go to my Facebook page and you're going to find something there about Darcy and Craig, and you're going to get to vote based on what you've seen and what you're going to see as to whether or not they think you guys are short-term or this could be the long haul. So we're going to do a little focus group on you guys while we're doing this. Sounds good. Okay, now, Dr. Lillian Glass is here. Now, she is a body language expert, and she has looked at this couple's compatibility on a recent date. So let's take a look at this, and then we're going to talk with Dr. Glass. When they're walking in, there's a little bit too much distance between them. And that's not a great sign, especially with a couple that's been together only seven months. You want to see them closer together. You can see right here, she's really uncomfortable. I don't think this is a girl that likes to eat much. One of the things that is comfortable, their feet are pointed right towards each other. They really are into each other, definitely. And look at her eye contact and look at his eye contact. They're looking right into each other's eyes. They're really connected. I hate food. Okay, what did I tell you? And you can tell she hates food. An angry hand says a lot. Is the tuna good? Now you see she's closing her mouth. No, nope, I don't really want tuna. But she'll go along with it because she's agreeable. She doesn't speak up. She keeps it in. But her body language, her facial expression says it all. Now here we see he's looking at another woman. Look at that face. She is not happy. She's going, what? What are you doing? I'm cuter. She's going to be agreeable, but she's not liking this. How's it going? <laughs> Tastes really good. Okay. Look what just happened. This is really good. Yeah. She says yes with her mouth, but her body language says no. It's horrible. She bites her lip. And when you bite your lip, that means you don't want to say a lot more. She, she doesn't like this too much. He's speaking up. He's telling it like his, she doesn't want to make waves. But that could be a problem in their relationship. Pretty you start and stop and like, wait, no. Yeah. I stutter. I stutter. Okay, now, the fact that she stuttered, it's kind of like she's vulnerable. And so he touched her. Kind of, that appeals to him. He finds that a turn on. As you can see, this is a great couple. They're very accommodating to one another, but there's something major that she needs to work on. Uh, <laughs> all right, now. <laughs> so how'd she do in grading y'all's paper? Pretty good. Did you catch him checking out? I did, yeah. You got busted. Yeah, I know, I love watch for that. Were you checking her out when no. she came in? She was wearing a green dress. Yeah. You know. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good answer. You're no dummy. That is a good answer. All right, but you thought he was checking her out. Yeah. And you didn't like it. I guess not. I tried to hide it, but they, she caught me. Yeah. <laughs> why would, but here, that's the point. Why did you try to hide it? Because I'm accommodating. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Dr. Glass. Welcome Dr. Glass to the show. Dr. Glass has a PhD uh, from the University of Minnesota. You work in communications and communication disorders. You said there is one thing that she really needs to do in this relationship. What is it? Communicate. If something's bothering you, speak up. He's going to love you anyway. So just go for it. 
You think she is too accommodating? I think she's a little bit too accommodating, and she might blow up after a while. She may be so accommodating, and then one day she may just all let it out. So it's better to say what's going on. You could say it politely like you do and sweetly, but you need to speak up. Why wouldn't you say something to him when you caught him checking that girl out? He says he wasn't, but you thought he was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we all think he was, but he said he wasn't. <laughs> He was just looking at the green mm -hmm. dress, which again is a really good answer and you need to stick with it. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but why would you choose not to right. say something? I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just curious. What, what, what was your thought process? My thought process is um, someone just walked in. He looked. My instinct, my reaction that you see is kind of like, Rrr. like she's <laughs> looking at another girl. But then I, then I kind of come to my sense of thinking, you know, someone just walked in the door. He looked up. No big deal. Yeah. And that's why I didn't say anything. Yeah. Be interested to see how this one turns out. <laughs> All right, next, we did a little hidden camera test on this audience. You're going to find out what that was when we come back. Now, without telling our audience, we kind of put them to the test before the show. I mean, they were not aware of what was going on. But we all know what PDA means, public display of affection. Now, we put a couple just outside in the audience holding area. And, well, we let them get frisky. Let's see how it went. <laughs> Were you surprised at people's reactions? Um, yeah, a little bit. I was really surprised, and I was surprised at one of the comments, too. What did they say? <laughs> um, she was really just offended. And really? It was, it was interesting. I really, <laughs> and I thought it was actually funny, so, and I tried to hold back the laugh, but Yeah, because we didn't want to tell them that we'd put you up exactly, to this. Exactly. All right, so, uh, where's <laughs> Tina? Uh, this made you uncomfortable. I think it made all of us uncomfortable, but I'm a very outspoken person. So everybody was talking about it around us. What were they saying? What did everybody say? Oh my gosh, look at them over there. Somebody yeah. needs to give them a room key. Somebody needs to tell them something. And finally I said, you know what, this is ridiculous. Feel, if you saw it and it made you feel uncomfortable, raise your hand. If you saw it and it didn't make you feel uncomfortable, raise your hand. Really? Well, that's about 50-50. Now, John's our fire marshal. He's over at the podium. John, what, did you, what was your reaction to this? It wasn't offensive to me, but he definitely had the posture of affection, and I was attracted to that, and I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have to admit, I was a little jealous. <laughs> but, no, I, I, I thought it was uh, nice. Yeah, well, see, so there's another point of view, right? Well, it's okay to kiss and hug, you know, for a little bit, but I mean, to constantly grope each other, that yeah. was a little too much. Yeah, okay, so, and you were doing, we asked you to do this, so mm -hmm. you were, and you were great sports to do it. Uh, do you need a room now? I mean, because <laughs> sure. you're a little All right. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk to an extrovert, introvert couple. Now, there's a personality switch that happened after I do. So, is this bait and switch, or what happened? We'll talk about that when we come back. Tuesday on Dr. Phil. A teen mom. You feel like the thing to do is to keep the baby. Abortion. That's the first thing you said was abortion. A concerned family. They're not capable of being parents. I haven't done anything to them. Well, you got the daughter pregnant. Who should raise this baby? If you guys want to reconnect with her, you couldn't be driving her more to him if you were chasing her with a stick. That's Tuesday. Then on Wednesday. They've dated for over three years. I want to see a ring on my fingers or 
goodbye. He says he's not ready. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Will he commit or quit? You need to make up your mind. You gonna marry this girl? And a wedding shocker. You found out you married somebody that was still married. With an unbelievable twist. Are you still intimate with him? That's Wednesday. We've been talking about personality today, and there are differences in personality. On DrPhil.com, we have what we call the Big Five Personality Quiz. You can find it there. You can take it. We'll score it for you right there. Now, Carly is an extrovert. Her husband, Aaron, is an introvert. Their personalities clash sometimes, true? Mm -hmm. Now, you guys differ on a lot of different points, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask Dr. Gosling to help me here. Like, for example, on agreeableness, she scored two, and he scored 13. <laughs> uh, what does that suggest in terms of interaction pattern? Well, what, what, the, real, the real difficult uh, pattern is if somebody is actually low on agreeableness and at the same time likely to say things. It's kind of dangerous because you have somebody who's, who's willing to be, uh, say things directly and will say them, and then the other person who won't communicate backwards. And so it's a sort of, it's, it's, it's the sort of classic bad combination which, which yeah, needs well, to be Well, on agreeableness, you scored two, and on extroversion, you scored 16. <laughs> and on agreeableness, you scored 13, very agreeable, and on extroversion, you scored seven. So you don't say a whole lot, you're not as outgoing, but you're highly agreeable. But you're not very agreeable and highly extroverted. So what do you do about this? Did he switch after you married? Oh yeah. How so? Well, I don't know if it is, but you know when you're dating, you talk a lot because you don't know anything about each other. So you end up talking and sharing about your childhood and just getting to know each other. And uh, we would do more things and see more people and he would talk and, you know, interact better and then, you know, then we got married and had children, and I don't know if it's just, if it's stress of everything else that he just doesn't want to think about it. Uh, yeah. Did you change after you got married? Were you putting your best foot forward and then you relaxed? Yeah, I got into a comfort zone and to where I wanted to, uh, you know, this is where I want to be. I'm, you know, this is what I've strived all my life to be. You know, I'm married, have a beautiful wife, you know, nice place. You know, beautiful children we're raising and stuff, and it's just like... <clears throat> I got an autopilot, just sitting there, it's like, okay, we can just, you know, cruise through life now, we're good. I've worked hard to get where I'm at, you know, let's, let's try to maintain that. Yeah, well, you're honest. You know, this is kind of like a garden. You can put a lot of work into creating a garden, and you can plant it, and you can water it, and you can get it going. Then you go, wow, I got a great garden. <laughs> you can go back up to the porch and sit down, but if you don't tend it, it's going to fall apart on you, right? It'll just be swallowed back up by the earth. I mean, weeds will take over, it'll dry up, it'll blow away. I mean, that'll be a, a real problem. You can't just say, oh, I've arrived, I've got what I want, I'm now where I want to be, so I can just go on autopilot. That, I mean, you, you got to know that won't work. Yeah, no, that's slowly coming to realization. That, yeah, well, let's know. speed that up. <laughs> you want him to plug back in, true? Oh, yeah, I want to... I'm also a stay-at-home mom, so it's nice to have a conversation with an adult where I can communicate and talk and laugh, you know. And Yeah. All right. So, Dr. Glass, what do you read body language right, well, wise right now? It's interesting because when I first saw them sit down, uh, she was very affectionate. She leaned towards him. She put his hands on him, and he just completely ignored her. He wasn't receptive to her affection. And that's a big thing because it has to be mutual. When she touches you, you've got to touch her back. You've got to connect with her. He's also she, nervous, too. Well, that, I, see, you're very agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> you're very agreeable. But still, we're not picking on him or making him wrong because he's a great guy. And he said you were beautiful and he loves you and wants to make this work. And that's the beautiful thing. He told Phil that he wanted to make, Dr. Phil, that he wanted to make this, this work. And one of the ways you can make this work is to be more affectionate to her when she touches you, when she communicates with you, when she looks at you. And that's really what we're talking about. And uh, I think that could be a great step in the right direction. Thank you. I got to do something, you know, try to bring something home. She likes dark chocolate. You know, I, once in a while I think about it and I'll stop by the store and bring her home a dark chocolate 
candy bar or something and say, hey, hon, I was thinking about you today or something like that. To just try to do something that she loves and doesn't really think that I'll remember. Now, did you see how when you said that, all women in the audience went, oh. <laughs> and it wasn't the dark chocolate. It was that I was thinking about you today, right? And so I wanted to, it doesn't take a lot. You, you know, here's the thing, Dr. Goslin, you, you don't have to be somebody you're not, right? It's just these things are ranges, and you can move to the high end of your range and still be genuine to yourself. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that means you've got to have some flexibility, though, right? Right, there, and there, there is a strong genetic component to all of these traits, but there's still a, a lot of room for variance within that. You're never going to have a, somebody become a complete extrovert who's an introvert, but there's room to change one's actions, if not your personality. Okay. All right, next, we're going to get to it and see what your stuff says about you. What a spy snooping around my office found out about me. We're going to talk about that next. We're right back. All right, so now we're going into the inner sanctum. I'm just sort of having a general look around the space. Maybe we can even look in a drawer. Very interesting. Sam Goslin is the professor of psychology at UT Austin, and he snooped around our staff offices last night to see what he could conclude about some of the people that work here. Take a look. So we're going into this office to have a look around. Okay, hi. Wow, quite a lot going on here. Extroverts love people, so we see lots of faces of people. What I like to do when I look at photos is to see which way they're facing. They could be the, for the benefit of you, but they could also be for the benefit of others. What we see here is a, an incredibly organized office. And, uh, you, you, may, you may think that this doesn't seem organized, but that, that is one of the way people who are very, very organized maintain their levels of organization just because they have a higher standard for organization. Got spare. Do you have a spare roll of this somewhere? Um, yes, you do. Um, <laughs> how did yeah. you know that? <laughs> this is interesting because even before, even before you get in the office, you're already learning things about the, the person. This is classic identity claims. This is making statements to others. You are entering a positivity zone. And indeed, that's consistent with what happens when you come in. This is an inviting, comfortable, calming place. It's also very, very inviting. It's not super inviting. This looks like quite a sort of a hard-nosed uh, place. We also see, we see the hula, hula the girl there, the, uh, and so that says, there's also a little bit of quirkiness. It's, it sort of reminds me of the bad guy in the James Bond movies. <laughs> the bad guy in the James Bond movies. It's interesting, that's Rich D. Michelle, who's in charge of money and budget at the show. He says no to more people about more things than anybody. So, Rich, what's up? Did he nail you? I think he did, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> it made me very nervous. I wasn't quite sure why he was in my office <laughs> snooping around. You, what did you see that said hard-nosed? Well, there wasn't really any sort of thing that made you comfortable there. There wasn't much in the way of softness or de uh, of, of a, a lot of people, personal reminders. There was... There was a baseball bat in one of the, like, <laughs> lying around. Uh, Whatever's necessary. So nothing said, come and stay, right? No, yeah. It just basically said, get out. Okay, well, uh, Dr. Gosling checked out my office as well. All right, so now we're going into the inner sanctum. At this point, I'm just sort of having a general look around the space. This is a very, very male office in the sense that there is a lot of evidence for accomplishment, a distinguished alumnus award, presidential citation, something the occupant is proud of. We see uh, sentimental things which may have great value, like a tennis racket and croquet set. So there's a lot of interest in uh, athletic memorabilia. So it's not just playing them, it is, it's an interest in sport itself. We're seeing uh, the symbols for thoughtfulness with the uh, chess set. Very interesting. So let's see what Dr. Phil has on the desk. There is some tea or, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's Dr. Pepper. It's Coke. 
You see there's these little dog blankets and it's like a whole set of dog toys very meticulously placed in the dog toy basket. That there is even a dog toy basket is pretty impressive. Um, so somebody with order, but somebody who also appreciates the companionship of a dog. So there's scholarly connections too in terms of both the sorts of the books that are here, Jane Austen, the Iliad. Maybe we can even look in a drawer. This drawer goes on forever. It's the one area where it's sort of slightly less formal and it's less traditional, you know, suggests a slight uh, discrepancy and nothing to get worried about. Although this is a very big room, it's also a place where somebody could sort of sit and enjoy their solitude. What we see here is somebody who express uh, introversion, but at the same time uh, can uh, engage uh, very meaningfully uh, with people, especially in, in a professional context. Uh-huh. Even Robin wasn't safe. She got a little snoop, too. Let's take a look at that. So now we're coming into Robin's dressing room. Very, very different from Dr. Phil's space. More colorful and brighter, and decorated in a very feminine way. The fact that things are laid out around here, it's, a, it's, it's somebody who's sort of spontaneous. This person really does have uh, photos of family. So these are classic emotional uh, regulators here. This person sits at the desk and is surrounded by people she loves and who love her. Things are generally organized, but there's a few shoes scattered around. Again, this is somebody who's sort of relaxed. Look, you even see a photocopied poster put up there. So somebody who's not going to be constrained by formal rules of what you can do and can't do. It's somebody who's just doing what they feel comes to them naturally. So how do you do? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's exactly who I am. I love to be surrounded by the people I love by having all the photos in there, and I make a complete mess when I get dressed. Yeah, because you're right, no rules. I mean, she just does what she wants to do. I <laughs> it's mean, right? True, though. It's true. It's I mean, because I noticed in there she had a, there's a painting on the wall, and she had taped something right. onto the painting. Right, right, exactly. Who does that? <laughs> Who tapes something onto a painting? She does. The rule breaker. But the picture spontaneous was more rule breaker. Yeah, yeah, spontaneous rule breaker. All right, so we did, this is kind of silly, but we did something else. What's your dog personality? Have you ever thought about that? Go to my Facebook page and you can find out right now. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to tell you which dog personality I have. We'll be right back. But personality doesn't always have to be about disorders. That's what we want to talk about today. So you can take this quiz and find out where you come down on the big five things. And you can have fun with this. Like the, the one I'm talking about now that we're posting up is just what kind of dog you would be with your personality if you were a dog. I turned out to be a German Shepherd. I'm not sure what that means, but I turned out to be a German Shepherd. And Robin, you were what? Uh, weren't you oh, a Lasso Opso? Yes. How cute. Look. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I love definitely. That. Definitely. Look at all the hair. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, more fun personality quizzes are on drphil.com. And as I say, this doesn't have to always be serious. You can have fun, so check them out. I really want to thank uh, Professor Sam Gosling. He is author of Snoop, and you can find that book in your bookstores on Amazon.com, and it will tell you an awful lot about the people around you, the people you work with, and yourself, perhaps. So I really recommend it. I've read it. It is good. Dr. Lillian Glass, thank you so much you. for being here and telling us what to pay attention to. We say a lot other with our words, true? Sure do. Sure do. Yeah. All right. All of my guests, thanks so much. We have a great time here in the studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, we would love to have you. The tickets are free. Go to drphil.com. You can click on Be in the Audience. Thanks so much for being here. So long.